There are 118 elements in the periodic table, each one having its own unique properties, and I'm here to explore the science behind each of them and show how they are made. Every episode I try to fill in a spot in the periodic table, now let's get to work. Today's element is hydrogen and oxygen, two very crucial elements for the us humans. When they combine, they form a very unique compound, a chemical that we can't go three days without. This chemical is water, something we interact with on a daily basis. The word hydrogen broken down means water maker, with the Greek beginning hydro meaning water and the French gen meaning maker. Hydrogen got its name when it was observed burning in the air, which produced water as a product. Hydrogen is also one of the most abundant elements in the whole universe. This is due to being only made up of one proton, making it the simplest and smallest of all elements, giving it the first place on the periodic table. Hydrogen has three different natural isotopes, one being common, hydrogen with one proton, the second one being deuterium. It is a proton plus a neutron, making it twice as dense. This twice as dense hydrogen forms deuterium oxide. This one neutron difference makes the water heavier. That's why it's commonly referred to as heavy water. The third isotope is tritium, a radioactive form with two neutrons. This isotope is quite radioactive with a half-life of only 12.32 years. Now that we have the basics of hydrogen done, let's move on to the next compound of water, oxygen. Oxygen is not only important as a compound of water, but it also is kind of important so us air breathers can breathe in all. Oxygen makes up less than 21% of the atmosphere, the rest mostly being nitrogen, with a few other trace gases mixed in in different amounts. Oxygen is needed to create combustion. Without it, no fire would burn. You could have as much fuel, as much heat as possible, but without oxygen source, no combustion will occur. You need something else too the chemical reaction between the three forms forming a fire. Oxygen in this case is known as an oxidizer or something that supplies oxygen. Oxygen by itself is quite strong force. It's responsible for rust, fire, and countless other chemical effects. With the basics of hydrogen and oxygen now, let's make some. As I said before, hydrogen and oxygen are components that make up water. So why don't we just get it from there? Getting hydrogen and oxygen from water is quite simple. All you need to do is pass an electric current through it. Unfortunately, water does not conduct, but if we dissolve an electrolyte in the water, it can be done. Then the current will pass. At the positive side, the anode, oxygen will form, and at the cathode, the negative side, hydrogen will form. The hydrogen and oxygen are then collected in the respective ampules. Here's the setup for the production of hydrogen and oxygen. The red side represents the anode, Black side represents the cathode. At the anode, this side, oxygen will form. At the cathode, this side, hydrogen will form. When this flip is switched, electricity will pass through the water, breaking it down into the hydrogen and oxygen. Now water by itself isn't conductive. You need a material known as an electrolyte to make it conductive. Now, depending on what you use, it's you'll have different gases produced. If you use salt, you'll have chlorine gas and hydrogen produced, which in this case, we don't want that to happen. We want oxygen. So we'll be using an electrolyte that produces oxygen. Let's now reposition the camera so it's pointing down here and we can see the bubbles produced. Now that we have the camera repositioned, let's first remember that this side is the anode and this side of the cathode. Anode is oxygen and cathode is the hydrogen. Now let's flip the switch and begin producing. Now that they're full, we can disconnect the power and then let them sit and let the rest of the water that's been on the top of the tubes drip down. 
Now that most of the water has dripped out, we can now seal them. Unfortunately, with this process, inevitably there's going to be some water left over. You can see a little in this tube, and there's also going to be some down by the neck. Hopefully, that water down by the neck, when I take it out, will drop out, and when I seal it, it'll evaporate off. Now, I'm tasked with kind of a challenge here with sealing these, while well, kind to keep them sealed away from the atmosphere. So, I might have to repeat this a couple times, until I get a tube of each. Let's start the torch and get going. Well, it's not the prettiest seal someone has ever made, but it is sealed. So here's our eye. eye. Mm. So it's not the prettiest seal someone has ever made, but it works. It is sealed. And this is our tube of hydrogen. Now we just have to do the oxygen. Hopefully it goes a bit better than this one. But this one went pretty well as it did seal. Last but not least, our second cylinder needs to be sealed. Let's turn the torch back on and get the oxygen ampules all sealed up. And the same thing happened again. It's not a pretty seal, but it w And the same thing happened again. It's not a pretty seal, but it is a seal. There we have it, our hydrogen and oxygen. Let's get add that to our collection. Now we're up to three. Only 115 more to go. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about today's topic, please post in the comment section below. If you want a place to talk science, please consider joining my Discord server. There are many like-minded individuals there. As always, I look forward to seeing you again, and if you like my content, please consider subscribe. It means a lot to me, and see you later. I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a jeep, I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever.